out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny, Sonny Featherland, an investigator for 20 years, and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. For all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray too. Still, what do I expect? We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence. Wolves and sheep, chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure, why not? It's just ridiculous. The dog eats the chicken. It's in our nature. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. What could possibly go wrong? Office lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes, older than this ancient building, and perhaps the whole city itself. Or maybe I'm just drunk. But she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time, so I had to give her a chance. My wallet and my badge. The wallet is real. The badge ain't. Chief Bloodboil took mine, so I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes, just in case. My last cigarette. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. She doesn't seem so dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never know. I promised myself I'd write a novel one day. Every whiskey has the same color nowadays, at least in this price range. I don't even know what these papers are. I wanted to travel the world when I was a kid, but I think I'm gonna end up dead in here whether I like it or not. Behind that door lies the kingdom of dirty clothes, cigarette butts, and empty bottles.
The Wild Gentlemen. Those guys rebuilt the city after the great fire of 867. My heroes when I was a little chick. I'm starting to think they should have left Clawville as it was, burned to the ground. We used to be star cops a few years ago. Tabloid press, radio interviews, and even a book series. I don't miss those days. Of course, Marty, my old partner, would disagree. He just loved the spotlight. This is... Uh, this is one of the most beautiful memories from my old life. Before Molly left me and took our daughter. The good things in life don't last long. The best ones always leave first. I saw that in the window of a shoe store. I never understood it, or what it had to do with shoes. M.B. Davis, the eternal king of jazz. The photo is from the days of jazz prohibition. I only heard the old man live one time, but I'll never forget that night. And not only because I woke up at the harbor without my gun, my badge, and my pants. I don't even know where the key is. Whatever's inside is gonna stay there forever. I don't see colors anymore. Only emptiness. Everything faded. I need another drink. Books I'm never gonna read. Maybe nobody ever has. Who is this dame, anyway? And what the cluck is she doing in my apartment on New Year's Eve? Introduce myself. My name is Deborah, Miss Deborah Ibanez. You're mistaken, ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip, M oh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland. It's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police, and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? I don't... I don't usually drink. Well, I've got to have one. And it'd be rude of me to drink alone. So, maybe some sherry? If you insist. But bourbon, please. Huh. Thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. So come on. Spill it. From the beginning. I haven't dusted you off in a while, partner. Looks like I may be needing you now. Oh man, I totally get you. Ironic, but ever since I've been on furlough, with only my fake badge sitting in my cabinet, I feel more like a cop than I ever had before. More like a Clawville cop, anyway.
That's better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats, exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick, thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some routine questions. Please. That's why I'm here. So, this is the part where the interrogation comes. Like in those detective movies. Something like that, Deborah. Yes. So, this is the part where the interrogation comes. Like in those detective movies. Something like that, Deborah. Yes. Must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I can scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. Who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important. Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Flowerville, maybe? Look, I... I don't want to answer that. I'm here on behalf of my employer, and not on personal business. Fair point, Deborah. Let's try a different approach. Why did you have to visit me this particular evening? I have my reasons. I may look like a silly little fawn, and maybe I am, but I still have common sense. I don't doubt that for a second, Miss Ibanez. This day is essential to my mistress, and she thought it's also important to you. A message in itself, for sure. But to be honest, even you are. You know what? I'll just take that as a compliment, even if it wasn't meant as such. Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately. Only if she really has to. 
How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages. And everyone knows who she is. So she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. How did you get this address? You know, my mistress has exceptional connections. If they were so exceptional, she wouldn't have chosen me. Don't be so hard on yourself, detective. You were the head of the famous chicken police, am I right? Was it a raccoon with a scarred face called Zip who recommended me? He hates me. No, Mr. Featherland. I don't know anyone like that. Lucky for you, Deborah. What exactly did you expect by coming here to meet me? I expected your help. Just like my mistress said. Oh, that's very nice. But have you seen this neighborhood? Have you seen this wreck called a hotel? Who were you hoping to find in a place like this? Someone reliable. Well, I am reliable. And discreet. That's right. And thorough. No question about that. And has a heart of gold. Okay, let's stop it right there. Are you in some sort of jam? Nothing of the sort. There are simply things better left unsaid. Then you're wasting my time. I trust your instincts. You'll manage it. Yeah. And I have no other choice, right? To be honest, no, Mr. Featherland. Not really. Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino. I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. You see, we're starting to understand each other. Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. <laughs> Smart answer. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him... Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything. you take it to the police. Just go there and file a report. Photos, flashing lights, fingerprints, you know the drill. 
The evidence is very clear. Even a moderately talented detective could easily wrap this case up. Or just try the phone. Triple five, triple one. Please, take a look at this. Well, okay. Let's see. I know Molly very well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. N. I felt like I'd been hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good God. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite wall, with the well-worn picture frames. Like an eternally dark hole in the wall. A missing piece. She was wearing a light silk dress and singing a lullaby. The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why Molly? Why now? Mr. Featherland? Santino, are you alright? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Blackmail? Don't play innocent with me. But... All right. When can I visit? Visit? Me? Not you, Miss Katsenko. Oh, yes. You can find her at the Tsar Club. Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that. But she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club. Especially on New Year's Eve, right? I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko, but there's one small problem, Mr. Featherland. Let me guess. Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. How did you know? Twenty years experience, ma'am. Oh, and please, call me Sonny. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Miss Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny. Mr. Feather, I mean, Sonny. Don't mention it, Deborah. I had no other plans for today, except drink. But tell me, do you have a light? I'm sorry, I, I don't smoke. Thought so. Hey, Lewis. Am I bothering you? No. no, no, no. Uh, of course not, Sonny. Ultrick, what's up? Could you come over? I've got a favor to ask if you're not busy. For you, anything. Just a minute. Lewis arrived a few minutes later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here. Not to mention that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. 
It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. The last economic crisis ruined it. And now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. The good old rabbit. I can always count on him, even on New Year's Eve. Could I ask you a few more questions, Deborah? Feel free, Sonny. Sonny, I've already told you what I know. I've never read the message. My job was to give it to you and nothing more. You really are this innocent, aren't you? I'm not sure I get what you mean. Let me give you some advice, sister. Leave the city and get as far as you can from the likes of Ibn Wesler. It's not so simple, Mr. Featherland. My mistress needs me. Is she really that important to you? That you drive around in the dead of night? to questionable places, to deliver messages you know absolutely nothing about. I would do more than that for her. I see. You're smooth. Real smooth. Thank you, Mr. Featherland. Sunny, please. Just Sunny. I've already told you more about myself than I wanted to. Afraid you'll get your hands dirty? I'm afraid I already did. So, Ibn Wessler, eh? You know you could have dropped the bomb a little earlier. If I started with that, I'm sure he would have thrown me out. You're right. He's one of the most dangerous gangsters in the city. I only know he's an influential businessman. Isn't that the same? Not even you can see the world as that black and white. So this Natasha dame... Look, I'm just the messenger. You have to talk to my mistress about the details. Miss Katsenko was very clear on this matter. I see, but... Please, Sonny, let's not make this even more uncomfortable. Okay, understood. Let's drop it. Thank you. Do you think my whereabouts aren't a secret? Do you think they ever were? Well, I was hoping. Clawville is a big city, but not so big that Santino Featherland can hide in it. Oh, please, flatter me more. Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. <clears throat> you know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, then. So long, Deborah. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in this city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. Nothing interesting in there. But if there is, it'll remain hidden for all eternity. It was New Year's Eve. 
and I was driving, half drunk, risking my whole life's work. But still, it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same. And the 121 days I had left till my retirement seemed like an eternity. When I look out the window of the hotel room I call home, I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music. The nine o'clock show, with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. In the meantime, the proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here, with nothing left to lose but our sanity, while others, the smart ones, had already gone. Molly. Does her name really upset me this much? All those years of solitude, and I still jump without question every time I hear it. And then there's Marty, my ex-partner who hates me. But I know I have to speak with him, no matter what. Why do I feel like the past is watching me on this goddamn night? I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night.